Welcome to the important topic of marketing ethics. I'm Dr. Grayson. Today we're going to spend some time talking about what is important in terms of you as a responsible marketer. We're going to learn about American marketing ethical norms and reflect on the ethics in our marketing discipline. Because what I will say to you is that regardless of what discipline area you're in marketing, you're developing strategy, branding work, you're pricing products, promoting them, distribution channels, you have a very important responsibility to do what is right. Regardless if somebody is is encouraging you to do something that maybe you don't feel good about. So today we're going to, to, I wanted to introduce these concepts to you because it's so important for your marketing career. So American Marketing Association has put together ethical norms. And as a responsible marketer in this discipline, it is really important for you to understand from a personal basis in the reputation of yourself, your company, and for the discipline itself. We must, as marketers, do no harm. Meaning we need to be conscious in everything we do that we are avoiding harmful actions. We need to embody the highest ethical standards because what we do impacts consumers, impacts people positively or negatively. And we need to make sure we are adhering, we understand the laws, we understand the regulations, and the choices we make. We have to foster trust in our marketing system. This means we need to every day wake up and act in good faith. We need to, we need to, to be fair in our dealings, regardless of the area you work in. Regardless of whether you are doing it, you are working with a partner, always trust that when we deal in good faith, our marketing system will continue. Marketing often has a bad reputation because what often what we see is when people aren't doing the right thing. They aren't acting in good faith. And for us to keep our discipline strong and for people to trust us, we must earn and foster trust. And we have to embrace that ethical values is a part of our job in everything we do from building relationships to enhancing customer confidence. We need to follow the core values of honesty, responsibility, fairness, respect, transparency, and citizenship. So those that I just mentioned, those are the ethical values that we need to embrace, embody every single day ensuring that we set forth to try to act in good faith and provide goodwill and be responsible. So we're going to go through each of these because I think it's important for you to to soak this in and make this a part of your daily life. The first is to be honest. We have to be forthright and clear in our dealings both with customers and stakeholders and competitors. We have to strive to be truthful in everything we do and at all times. If we have a claim on our product, on our offers, we must be very clear about that claim and we must deliver on it. And we need to stand by our products if they fail. And they will fail. You will have a failure not only in your product, maybe in your supply chain, maybe in the delivery of your product, maybe in the pricing, but, you know, be honest about it. Be upfront. Let customers know, whoops, we've had a boo-boo. We're down for maintenance. Um, this is how it's going to imp- impact you. Be upfront and honest. Do not hide these things. Um, and then stand by your um, honor and honor our explicit and implicit commitments and promises. Do what you're going to say you do. If you promise something for a customer, deliver on it. If you promise something to a partner, deliver on it. If you promise something to a coworker, deliver on it. If you promise something to a family member, deliver on it. Truth and honesty, it all starts there. 
then we must be responsible. We have to accept the consequences of our marketing decisions and strategies. So by doing this, the reason marketing exists, and if you remember the definition of marketing, it is an exchange. And so I give something to somebody and they give something of value back. So in order for us to, to, to provide value, the consumer, the end user must have a need. And it is our job to serve those needs. We need to avoid coercion with stakeholders. Um, we, we shouldn't get together um, at the, at, and, and work together at the harm of someone else. We also need to, we need to acknowledge that the social obligations of stakeholders comes with increased marketing and economic power. So, so we need to be aware of how we are impacting society. And we need to be not only aware, but we need to do the right thing. Um, if this is really important, we need to recognize when you're doing your segmentation and your targeting and your positioning, you need to recognize that there are segments that are vulnerable. And not only do we need to un understand the rules and regulations and laws and compliance around these groups, we need to personally take it upon ourselves to make sure when we are promoting or building products for or distributing that we are in no way harming, harming these vulnerable groups, including children, seniors, economically disadvantaged, and we need to, to, to take this, or those who are su substantially disadvantaged. These, say, for example, somebody with, with some sort of, of disability. And we also need to consider our, our part in environmental stewardship and decision making. So it is our responsibility as marketers being fair to balance justly the needs of the buyer with the interest of the seller. So we have a lot of power in marketing and consumers have a lot of power in their influence. And so as marketers, we need to be sure that we are clear in our advertising in the way we communicate in our selling efforts, that we avoid at all costs, costs false, misleading, and deceptive promotion. Not only is this the wrong thing to do, and you may even be feed for it, you may even go to jail for it, but you need to understand that by doing these things, you are eroding the equity you've built in your, in your brand over time. It takes a long time to build a strong brand. It takes a half a second to destroy it. You need to reject any manipulations and sales tactics that harm customer trust. Again, protecting your re reputation. Refusing to gauge in price fi fixing with competitors. Do not predatory price. Again, harming the vulnerable. And avoid bait and switch tactics. If you're promoting something or an offer, don't get somebody's foot in the door and try to bait them with something else or switch them to something else. It's just very wrong. And also, you need to be very aware of conflicts of interest in marketing. So we partner with a lot of people. So you may you may find over time that you like working with a, soup, a, a particular partner because of various reasons. You know, hiring, hiring a family firm um, in a public company, that could be a conflict of interest. Um, you know, hiring somebody uh, out of nepotism, that could be a conflict of interest. You know, giving, giving one customer a better price over the other. So seek also to protect the private information. So, so consumer privacy is so important. And, and make sure that you put in um, enough security and safety standards that you are not going to breach that confidence or that information from that customer. Now, respect, I think we all understand. You understand whether you've been disrespected. And it is upon us to be respectful at all times to our stakeholders. And that means we have to understand that not everybody, um, everyone, everyone has differences. 
And we should always look at and in, in, in anything we do to refrain from avoiding stereotypes, you know, depicting particular demographic groups in a negative or dehumanizing way. Whether this is conscious or subconscious, you really need to be respectful of genders, race, sexual orientation, um, economic standing, cultures. Listen to customers' needs and make all reasonable efforts to monitor and improve satisfaction on an ongoing basis. If you don't have, um, if you don't have respect for your customers when they're giving you constructive feedback, your reputation isn't going to be very good long-term. Customers, uh, remember, it's an exchange. If we're not fulfilling their needs or the promise we delivered to them, we're not going to be in business very long. We also need to understand and respectfully treat our buyers, our suppliers, our intermediaries, our distributors from all cultures. So not everyone has the same culture within different areas of the United States, let alone other countries. So as you as you 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 work with people from other cultures, respect their social norms. And then here's one that I you know, acknowledging the good work of others. Um, if you're working with with a product team that came up with just a, a wonderful improvement Give them credit for that. If you you're you're you've got a, a team member who just came up with a, an amazing email and and promotion page, and they're just killing it, please give them credit. Give credit where credit is due. That is the right thing to do. That is being respectful. And then always treat your competitors as you would want to be treated. So another thing is transparency. Uh, transparency creates a spirit of openness in marketing operations. We always have to communicate clearly to our cons constituencies, clearly to our partners, clearly to our fellow coworkers. We have to be transparent in our results. We have to be transparent in the um, the communications the T's and C's, the compliance information that goes out to our customers. Um, as I mentioned, we also have to embody that constructive criticism is good. Sorry about that. Um, and then make sure that you proactively take action regarding significant product or service risks. If you're about to bring a product to market that you know has some, some failures, that's a risk. You need to really clearly say, is it a go or a no-go? Um, you know, if you have to make a substitution for a product, is that the right thing to do? Have you communicated it? And we want to, to understand, in the end, how not being transparent or being transparent enough in what you're doing affects the customer's purchase decision. And then also always, always list your prices in terms of financing as well as available price deals and adjustments. So list them, let the customers know what they are, be transparent. And then finally, we have citizenship. Being a good citizen, it, economically, legally, philanthropically, societal responsibilities that serve as stakeholders, we should always think about protecting our environment in the execution of our marketing campaigns. We should give back to our communities, to our volunteer um, and charitable donations. And then we should contribute to the betterment of marketing and its reputation. So this is why we're having this discussion, because you have a responsibility to be a good citizen in the discipline that we serve, because we know there are others out there that don't. And if we follow those practices, not only is it going to harm our reputation, our firm's reputation, it will ruin the reputation of our discipline. 
And then finally, urge your supply chain members to ensure that all of their trade is fair. Yes, particularly in developing companies. So it's our, this is a lot of rights and wrongs. It's a lot of things to absorb and think about. So I want you to take a minute to reflect on what you would do. And I'm going to give you a list that I created that I've had for a long time that I think is really important. And, I, and, and first of all, the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, what is your gut telling you? So if you're working on an initiative, whether it's a product, whether you're promoting something, whether you're working with a, tradi- uh, a distribution partner, I want you to think about how are you feeling inside? If you're feeling uneasy at all, Share that feeling with others and get their opinion. Being vocal about this and communicating it will help in coming to the right decision. Go to someone else. Go to your supervisor. Ask them, is it fair? Is what you're doing fair to everyone, to all? Have you avoided harming the vulnerable? We went through those vulnerable groups whether it is somebody who is um, a, a, a child, the mature market, uh, maybe somebody from um, a social perspective. Have you uh, economically disadvantaged? Have I obtained information in a reputable manner? So as marketers, we can get competitive. That you know, we get paid by, by the top line, right? And, and of course, we have to do competitive analysis against our um, to find out what our competitors do but we should always do this in a forthright manner don't be getting somebody drunk at a trade show to get that price list you know go even just 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 do this in a in a forthright manner Um, and then I want you to think really clearly about these two things because this has to do with you and yourself as a human being If you are taking a step towards an initiative, even if it's a social market, quick little content piece, am I okay seeing my name in the media based on this decision? Because it takes a half a second to press go. It takes a minute and a half to lose a reputation. And if you're doing something where you are uncomfortable seeing um, negative reviews, about you and your decision if you don't want to wind up on um, on the news or a blog post or having your reputation ruined in the industry think about those things there's my EMA post and then finally this is the one that I always think is really important can I look my mother in the eye and tell her I made a good decision if you don't feel like you can tell your mom what you did it's not the right thing to do and as long as I have been in marketing my 30 year marketing career I have had been placed with decisions um, you know to to obtain revenue to help people get their bonus at the end of the year to um, get a product to market quicker to do a promotion that that will help us yield Um, a lot of revenue very quickly and these are always very difficult decisions to make and I will tell you that I have been asked to do things I don't want to do in my career and you will too and it will happen often and it could be somebody who is your supervisor or even the CEO of the company but I will tell you in all my years of marketing when I feel like it's not the right thing to do and I communicate it to others, um, and, and I am being asked to do something that I'm not comfortable with, and I'm not willing to tell my mom it was a good decision, I will go back to, to the decision maker and say, I'm not willing to do this. I don't find that it's ethically moral. And if they say, yeah, we're going to do something unethical, or do it anyway, you take the risk of losing your job. But I will tell you, in the 30 years of my marketing career, I have never lost a job for telling somebody I am unwilling to do something that I don't believe in. And I hope you have a career like mine. And sometimes I think it just takes us the opportunity 
to push back, to say, no, this isn't right. Because at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? And we all want people to treat us like we want to be treated. And I haven't lost a job yet, but you know what? If I had, it was the right thing to lose that job. So I will leave you with that. I want you to be good citizens, good marketers, keep our discipline strong and healthy. Be good people, do the right thing. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me in Canvas. And if you haven't yet, if you would please subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can get more videos such as this on topics from the Marketing Doctor. So I, I, I want you to go forth and be great citizens. I want you to do the right thing. And I want you to go through that checklist every time you're ready to uh, work on a marketing initiative. So thank you very much and have a fantastic, spectacular day.